In the history of global health, there have been some fantastic successes and there have been some utter failures. And so, for example, uh, the only disease we've ever fully eradicated in humans is smallpox. And I can't tell you how much I've benefited from talking to people like uh, Bill Fagey, Larry Brilliant, and the others who were involved in the smallpox eradication process. I think that as we reflect on what's going on with COVID right now, uh, it's just remarkable how little we've focused on when we were successful in the past and what we need to do given those lessons. We have been shaping and reshaping our planet, the only home humans have ever known for thousands of years. Aboard this tiny spaceship called Earth, we have explored, invented, and conquered. Humankind has faced incredible odds, and we've also created many of our own new problems. Now that our societies are maturing, albeit imperfectly, how do we start to think about solving more problems than we create? For those of us who strive to be problem solvers in our world today, how do we do it? I'm Zainab Salbi, founder of Women for Women International. Like many of you, I've been driven in my life to try and solve some of the world's biggest challenges. I feel a deep passion inside me to fix the things that I see that are broken in our world. And I've asked myself, how can we do this problem solving and world changing work purposefully? consistently, and most importantly, do it successfully. It is the work we do throughout our lives that will let future generations judge whether we should be called good ancestors. I'd like to invite you to join me for this virtual learning series becoming better ancestors as we talk with some of the greatest advocates of our time who successfully conquered and eradicated one of the world's most serious problems, smallpox. The lessons from smallpox eradication have never been more relevant as countries struggle to get and keep the COVID-19 pandemic under control. Digging into the specific experiences of public health leaders with smallpox and other major global health threats will ask really big questions and explore what we call nine lessons from global health to change the world. Nine proven, simple, reliable ways to create positive change consistently as we all tackle ever more complex problems across human societies. Nine approaches to becoming better ancestors. I also encourage you to explore and contribute to 9lessons.org throughout your journey to becoming better ancestors and as you go on to create positive change in our world, to share your experience and wisdom with others. So let's get started. Lesson 1. This is a cause and effect world. If we understand the causes, we can change the effects. In 1980, the World Health Organization declared the world free from smallpox. For the first time in history, a human infectious disease had been eradicated. This was a monumental achievement. Smallpox killed a third of those it infected, resulting in the death and disfigurement of hundreds of millions of people. After decades of efforts by hundreds of thousands of public health and government workers, as well as significant international financing and cooperation, the fight was finally over. Perhaps one of the first truths to arise in thinking about how to solve smallpox was first realizing that for every effect, there is an underlying cause. It is a cause and effect world. Uncovering the true cause means you may affect the real world outcome. Most of what we know as disease today, before it was understood, was blamed on fate or destiny. And over time, many causes of disease have been misidentified. Schizophrenia was blamed on bad mothering, TB on bad air, and HIV AIDS on immorality. Factors that turned out not to be the true cause. So if we understand the causes, then we can also change the effects. Changing the way events unfold is empowering. It's also at the heart of how we become good ancestors. Now let's learn from the experts. Let's go to the classroom. 
President Jimmy Carter appointed Dr. Feige as director of the U.S. Center for Disease Control in 1977. He has spent his life finding and fighting diseases around the world. President Barack Obama awarded Dr. Feige the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor for his work to eradicate smallpox. Dr. Susmita Parashar is a cardiologist at the Emory Heart and Vascular Center and Associate Professor of Medicine at Emory University School of Medicine. She is a passionate clinician researcher and educator and trains medical students, residents, and cardiology fellows. In addition to being an accomplished medical figure in her own right, Dr. Parashar's career was inspired by her father-in-law and mentor, Dr. Mahandra Datta, who was a field expert working for the Indian government during the height of the smallpox epidemic in India. He ultimately rose to become India's Deputy Director General of Public Health. Think back to the late 1700s. The Enlightenment in Europe was many decades in progress. In the United States, we were getting our independence and smallpox was raging throughout the world. People could feel well one day, and the next day they would have a fever, they would have a headache, and by the third day they would have a rash. And this rash would turn into pustules full of blood and pus on their eyelids, inside their ears, on their genitals. And when they would break, they would leave a stench. These people were miserable. They didn't want to move. Many famous people got smallpox, including Voltaire and Mozart. When Voltaire recovered, he wrote that 60% of all children born in the world will get smallpox. A third of them will die, a third of them will be scarred for life, and a third will get away scot-free. But no one knew why, so people would say maybe they were being punished by the gods, or maybe this was fate. But in England, there was a young practitioner by the name of Edward Jenner. Jenner was of this idea of there must be cause and effect. He was helped one day when a milkmaid said, you know, I'll never get smallpox because I had cowpox. Well, this intrigued him. And for 12 years, he studied what happens to milkmaids during smallpox outbreaks. And he concluded those who had had cowpox on their hands, which just was a viral disease of the udders of cows, they were safe from smallpox. So he finally had the nerve in May of 1796 to take material from a cowpox lesion on the hand of Sarah Elms, insert it into the arm of James Phipps, a young boy. And then he tried to give that boy, James Phipps, smallpox a few weeks later, and he couldn't do it. We now had gone from a mystery to at least some cause and effect. He could tell that the cause was something that he could actually change by providing cowpox. So you would think this is the end of the story. We now have a vaccine, it's cheap to make, it's easy to make, and the whole world should benefit. But it wasn't true, because parts of the world continued to have smallpox right until the 1950s and 1960s and 1970s. And almost always, it was the poorest people in the poorest countries. In India, the mortality rate was as high as 40%. The result was that for generations, the poorest people were often left diseased, disabled, or dead. Mothers and fathers prayed to God for mercy and protection for their young children, but prayers alone did not protect them. Leaders from India and around the world came together with a single clear goal in mind, use proven effective vaccine to eradicate smallpox from India. People from the World Health Organization, the CDC, and non-governmental organizations joined hundreds of thousands of people from India working together on the ground. But to get it done, they had to change their approach. Rather than applying resources evenly across the country, they focused immunizations on the hardest hit communities. A single case could lead to an outbreak. They set up an unprecedented plan for finding and then vaccinating everyone within a given radius of a case. Initially, that meant vaccinating the household and other direct contacts. This was called the containment approach, an approach you're very familiar with, Dr. Vegi. The message was simple. Smallpox can be eradicated by surveillance and containment. 
these workers championed the idea of a cause and effect world and it worked. They showed that by understanding the cause, by understanding smallpox, how it spread and how it could be prevented, they could change the effect. They could and they did completely eradicate this dreaded disease within India. It's an amazing story that in one year from May of 1974 until May of 1975, India went from the highest rates of smallpox that they had had for decades to zero in the entire country. I think it's one of the most exciting years in the entire history of global health. Absolutely.